Hi, my name is Vu Nguyen. I'm the conference producer of the MDNM West 2013 conference in Anaheim, California. And this is me, Imran. He's the managing director of Incube Labs uh, in California. Thank you. So, Mir, um, today we talk a lot about uh, innovation. So, uh, wh what do you think about um, you know the direction of innovation taking place in the next five, ten years? You know, I, I, um, clearly uh, there are different uh, uh, directions. There are ma many different directions that will go um, I, on the um, therapeutic side. I, I think uh, you'll see more personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, drug device combination therapies uh, and uh, uh, therapies that will uh, be uh, uh, will utilize a uh, diagnostic test. Uh, so, a genetic test uh, uh, matching specific drugs to specific genetic uh, uh, genotypes or phenotypes. So, uh, I think personalized medicine will finally. Um, uh, start mm -hmm. becoming rea reality. The other area, um, I think, is uh, this whole revolution of wireless technologies and sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think there is a lot of promise there for disease management, um, self-care, wellness. Uh, you be you're beginning to see that happening already, mm -hmm. but I think it will uh, grow tenfold or, or more in the next five to ten years. The theme of our 2013 conference is innovation without constraints. Uh, given the fact that we have a lot of new regulatory updates in the U.S., um, or like the FIDASIA uh, 510K changes and the post-market surveillance national plan, uh, what advice would you give to medical device companies, especially the startup small uh, companies, uh, to overcome uh, these regulatory constraints? Well, first of all, innovation always has constraints, and right. and and uh, so uh, the 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 key um, issue, the key challenge, is going to be uh, addressing um, um, specific clinical needs, uh, identifying clinical needs that are poorly addressed today, mm -hmm. and and solving those uh, so that there is a real improvement in patient outcomes. I think those are the kinds of innovations um, that will be over, able to overcome the regulatory challenges and the financing challenges. Mm -hmm. um, incremental small innovations where, where the improvement is very small mm -hmm. are going to be harder to um, finance mm -hmm. and harder to overcome uh, regulatory challenge. Right. Uh, today at the Biomed San Jose conference, we talk a lot about the consumerization of medical devices. Uh, what's your take on, on this new trend and uh, how medical device companies can capitalize on this uh, new trend? So, you know, I think the, the, clearly the technology is here. Mm -hmm. uh, the wireless technologies, the, the um, uh, uh, cloud computing capabilities, uh, sensors of all kinds. And uh, they can be implemented to monitor a variety of uh, uh, chronic diseases. The problem, the challenge has been um, there is no reimbursement today. Mm -hmm. So um, the kinds of solutions you're beginning to see are consumer self-pay solutions that are not really even FDA approved. Uh, so in order to really make these things, make uh, this consumerization of medical devices a, um, um, a, a, a truly beneficial to consumers. You really have to go a step further. I think uh, companies who are developing those will have to get FDA approval. You won't be able to avoid that uh, because you will have to address um, uh, diseases like heart, disease, uh, heart failure, um, uh, diabetes, uh, and many other chronic conditions. So uh, in order to do that, you'll have to have more sophisticated sensors, more sophisticated algorithms, and feedback to the patient and reporting to the physician. So all this will require, I think, FDA uh, approval. And that's, that's the biggest barrier. And the second barrier, as I said, is who pays for it? Is there right. reimbursement or not? Mm -hmm. You mentioned one of the constraints is uh, funding, but uh, I also uh, heard you mention in today's uh, panel discussion the challenge of clinical trials. 
what advice would you give to medical device companies undergoing clinical trials? You know, um, a, a trial design is, is very uh, good. Trial design is critical uh, uh, to um, not only getting FDA approval, but getting the correct labeling so that you can um, go to market with a uh, product that can be properly, mm -hmm. where you can make appropriate claims. Um, the other important part of clinical trial design is obviously um, healthcare economic data collection. Mm -hmm. So you design your trials so that you are, for each patient that enrolls, you are collecting, you're monitoring every dollar spent on that patient. And you're also monitoring uh, every dollar spent on patients who are under, uh, who, who might get a, uh, the, who might be treated with current therapies. Right. Uh, the control arm. So you, you, you compare what are the current uh, costs of managing these patients versus with the new therapy or new diagnostic. And unless you have that, uh, you won't have reimbursement. This is for disruptive innovations. Now, okay. there are other innovations that can be, um, uh, if you can fit them into current reimbursement codes if it is a 510k or a 510k with clinical but it fits inside let's say for instance it's a new kind of stent mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't advise any company to develop a new stent because um, the improvement you have to show that you uh, is going to be uh, 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 such a small in incremental improvement that the size of the clinical trial will be huge and um, and and uh, so it'll, it, for small companies, go for big improvements. Big improvements translate into uh, big patient outcome improvements. Translate into smaller trials, mm -hmm. and that's very critical. G given the fact that we have a lot of regulatory constraints in the U.S., uh, some companies decide to go to Europe first uh, for their uh, product um, launch. Uh, so we, we have uh, seen this globalization of healthcare and medical device uh, entering uh, different markets. Uh, what's your opinion on, on the, the EU market as well as the emerging markets uh, such as India and China, and also Japan, a very mature market for, for medical devices? So for small companies, uh, I think going to India or China is probably not a good idea immediately. Europe is still the best place outside the U.S. Japan is a very mature medical device market, uh, but it takes uh, uh, MHW, which is the equivalent of FDA, takes a lot longer mm -hmm. to get approval. So young companies generally start in Europe. India and China are very young and nascent markets. In India, for instance, the price pressures are just amazing. So you mm -hmm. can't really go there and get it approved because then the market is small and, the, and there's a huge price pressure. Um, companies like General Electric, Medtronic are really um, betting on India and China. Uh, the new CEO of Medtronic uh, uh, came from GE and he has a history of developing those markets. So mm -hmm. we'll wait and see how, uh, how well uh, Medtronic is able to penetrate those markets. But clearly there are, you know, two and a half billion people between India and China. and a huge, um, uh, uh, a large size of, uh, uh, you know, middle class um, uh, uh, people, you know, maybe 300 million middle class uh, people in, the, in, in India and equal number in China. So it's a, it's a big population and uh, we cannot ignore that. All right. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure.